Johnson draws the pole for the first heat event. 30 super late models signed in to kick off the Pittsburgher weekend. 10 laps for heat race number one. Bob Mosky and Davey Johnson bring him to the green. Keith Barbara in the 17 car makes an early pass of second and diving to the moisture on the bottom of the speedway takes the lead from the former Pittsburgher winner. Barbara, who has raced very little in his family owned 17 during 2007, out to an early lead and storming up through the field into the third spot. It's Chris Hackett in the Robert Strucking 33. Hackett gaining two, now looking to gain three positions in one lap using the bottom of the speedway. Davey Johnson battles back to maintain the second spot. Contact with Lynn Geisler as Hackett drifts up the banking, falling back to fifth. Chris Hackett in car 33, a regular competitor in the tough state line Erie circuit in southern New York and northern Pennsylvania. He's got a trio of former Pennsylvania Motor Speedway track champions as Keith Barbara is the leader. Davey Johnson is second, Lynn Geisler in third. Hackett now in fourth, a couple of car lengths away from Geisler. And the number one Cochran machine is gaining on the Malkuit Engines house car in a battle for second position. Keith Barbara opening up a huge lead after starting in the second row and winning last Saturday night at Cannonball Motor Speedway. Top five strung out along the front stretch. Ben Miley, the former track champion, losing a position at the back of the field. Jim Lepro in the six, trying to thread the needle between Miley and Bob Mosky. Halfway, the signal given by Chief Starter Denny Carson. Five laps down, five to go. Keith Barbara, your leader. Davey Johnson in second, Lynn Geisler third. Up to fourth, it's Boom Briggs in car 99. Boom Briggs, who learned everything about dirt late model racing from Chubb Frank into the fourth spot. Hackett back to fifth. In the sixth spot, it's Mike Johnson. Keith Barbara in car 17, who earned his Pennsylvania Motor Speedway track championship, driving for the Phil Lucon racing team, has a full straightaway advantage over Davey Johnson. Lynn Geisler, the 2006 Lernerville Speedway champion, closing into the high side, making a challenge for second down the back straight. And Geisler using the cushion to power around Johnson for the runner up spot. With two laps to go, Geisler a straightaway behind leader Keith Barbara. Geisler in his 26th year of competition with the number one Cochran sponsorship. Taking over second from Davey Johnson. Boom breaks in fourth. And in fifth with the white flag waving for the leader, a challenge developing as Chris Hackett in the 33 was once running third. He's in jeopardy of falling back to sixth as Mike Johnson in the 2J, former winner at the Pennsboro Speedway. Mike Johnson in the 2J car around the outside of Hackett to claim the fifth spot, but taking the checkered flag, Keith Barbara from South Park, Pennsylvania, the triangle gas machine over Lynn Geisler, Davey Johnson, Boom Briggs, and Mike Johnson advancing to the fifth position on the final lap. Steve Baker in the zero. Ten laps the distance. Green flag is out. Look at the launch by Mark Bunnell. Bunnell, the longtime veteran and former track champion. He's a former winner of the Big Kahuna at Cumberland. And he gets the jump on Jared Miley, the reigning track champion as of last Saturday. Now Miley powers into the low side of the speedway. Cannot yet take the lead away from Banal. Three cars fighting for third position. Bart Hartman splitting the difference between the 17 of Stalder and the 22 of Satterley. 
the Bartman on the move from fifth starting position into third in one lap. Change of lead in turn four, not quite as Jared Miley falls one car length short at the scoring line of taking the point position from Mark Bunnell. Bart Hartman now in third and pulling away from the drivers he battled with to earn that spot. All eyes on the lead, Mark Bunnell to the top side, Jared Miley to the inside. The Calusi Chevrolet H1 looking to take a position away from the T8 of Bunnell. Bunnell, former winner of the Buckeye 50 at the Wayne County Speedway. Miley this time three or four car lengths off the rear bumper of the T8 going into turn three, but still pulls even out of four. Bunnell will continue to lead. Bart Hartman not able to run away from the rest of the field after taking over the third position. Miley and Bunnell with a half straightaway advantage over the Bartman in car 75. Peters again side by side in turns one and two. Mark Bunnell, whose late model racing career dates back to the NDRA wedge cars. Jared Miley, who wasn't even born yet at that time, takes the lead now out of turn four and crosses the scoring line officially out in front. Jared Miley, the current track champion of Pennsylvania Motor Speedway. Five-time winner this season. He shows the way over Mark Bunnell and Bart Hartman, who's now closing in on veteran Bunnell. In the fourth spot, Brandon Burgoon in the 17 car. Top four cars tightening up just a bit as they are running away from Satterley's 22 machine in fifth. With just two laps to go, Bart Hartman dive bombing to the inside, trying a slide jaw pass on Mark Bunnell. Unsuccessful for the moment, but Hartman gained a lot of ground in a very little time. The urgent cash 75 of Bart Hartman. Side by side with Bunnell as the white flag is waving. Jared Miley way out in front. Battle is for second, Bunnell and Hartman. Burgoon solidly in third, Satterley or in fourth, I should say, Satterley unchallenged in fifth. In turn three, Hartman up to the cushion, takes away the second spot, but checkered flag for Jared Miley. Hartman in second with a last lap pass over Mark Bunnell, then Brandon Burgoon, and Greg Satterley in 22, completing the top five. For 10 more laps of the Hoosier Tire Mid-Atlantic Late Models, Green flag is out. 13 of Wilmoth makes it three wide on the front straight. Gun out to an early lead, but here comes Muscatine, Iowa's Brian Burkhofer, the former World 100 winner, taking the lead from Scott Gunn on lap number one after a row two starting position. The 02 car of Al Atella sliding into third behind Gunn, then it's Schweitzer. And all the way from last starting spot into fifth, Lou Bradich in the 09 car, closing quickly on Schweitzer. Bradich started dead last in this heat race. And in one lap, he cracks the top five in the 09 car. Off the pace, we see the 81 of DJ Miller from Hookstown pulling pit side. Challenge for the fourth position, Bradich quickly around Schweitzer and now a battle for the second spot. The 0-2 of Atella around Scott Gunn in the 14. Al Atella, whose championship season here at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, came at the wheel of the Phil Lucon 84, just like Keith Barbara, who won our first heat race. So with Brian Burkhofer way out in front of this heat race, the 0-2 of Atella. Into the second spot, Gunn in third, Lou Bradich up to fourth, Schweitzer hanging on to fifth.
Battle for the seventh spot, the 91 of Tommy Beck, a five-time feature winner on the pavement of Motordrome Speedway, and the 68 of Dennis Niederreiter. Niederreiter has competed in several different divisions through the years here at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, just behind the 13 of West Virginia's Wilmoth. Five laps down, five remaining. Brian Burkhofer out of turn four to begin working lap number six. Battle developing for third. Lou Bradish to the inside, Scott Gunn to the outside. Former limited late model champion here at the Speedway. Scott Gunn in the 14G car, holding the high lane against Lou Bradish, one of the all-time leading feature winners here, and Bradish takes the spot away. Multiple time track champion Lou Bradish from Chester, West Virginia glides back up to the top side of the speedway securely into the third position now. Leader Brian Burkhofer, the former World 100 champion, former track champion Al Atella in the 0-2 car is second. Atella, after his championships, took a hiatus from racing and returned to the wheel of the 0-2 machine. Then Bradich, another former track champion in the 0-9, started last, riding in third. Former limited late champion Scott Gunn in the 14 is fourth, and Rodney Schweitzer, the Bedford Speedway invader, holding on to a top five position. White flag waving for leader Burkhofer, whose lead is a full straightaway now. Burkhofer entering lap traffic should not be a factor, as he borrowed Pennsylvania Motor Speedway legal race tires to compete tonight into turn number four. Checkered flag will wave Brian Burkhofer, a heat race winner in the B-15. Coming home second in the 02, Al Atella. Third will go to the 09 of Lou Bradich. In fourth spot, the 14G of Scott Gunn and Rodney Schweitzer finishing fifth. the Brockers Machine Shop Crate Late Models. First of two heats, they're three wide on the back straight, still three wide now, eight laps the heat race distance. Their feature will be 20 laps in length coming up later this evening. Out in front, the 0-9 car. Mike Pegger Jr. out in front, the Lernerville Pure Stock champion, showing the way in this eight lap heat race for the Crate Late Models. In the second spot, Russ Colasar in the 27, and locked together down the front straight, cars that cannot separate the 12 machine of Daryl Charlier spins to the outside after he was hooked together with the one of track champion Kyle Lucon. The five lap feature event for the late models. Mike Pegger Jr., the early leader here in this eight lap heat race for the Brockers Machine Shop Great Late Models. 27 of Colasar, a feature winner this season. Restarting from the outside groove with six laps to go and taking the lead from Pegger is veteran Colasar. Colasar won many, many times in the limited late models in car number eight. Returning to the cockpit now to drive the 27 machine. Pegger battles back on the outside. Russ Colasar in car 27, the leader. Mike Pegger in the second spot. The B4 of Steve Beatty in third. Three wide on the front straight, Charlier and Lucon storming back up through the field. Lucon with even more serious body damage now than after the caution flag incident. Kyle Lucon, the track champion, back in the top five. Charlier in the 12, storming into the sixth spot after going to the tail. Daryl Charlier in the 12, a third generation race car driver. And the one of Lucon, whose sister is also out on the speedway in car number 84. As Colasar builds up a big lead now, 
The 09 of Pegger feeling the pressure of Beatty's B4 machine. 28 of Brian Hank closing in on that battle as well. Three cars strong will be the fight for second spot. Pegger all the way up by the outside retaining wall, clears the inside lane for Beatty to make a try. Instead, Beatty has to defend his turf to the 28. As Hank is on the move and threading the needle between those two drivers, Hank gains one spot, looking to gain another on the final lap. That's Tommy Schoenhofer in the 28, I'm told. Checkered flag will wave for Kolasar and Schoenhofer up to the second spot with Pegger in third, Beatty in fourth, and Lukon battling back to fifth. 35, Mike Sisir, the former track champion, starting on the pole. Outside of him, the 54 car of Chris Angelicchio. Those two drivers lead him to the green, the 76 car. Jason Ryder into the third spot. And the double zero car of Josh Holtgraver into fourth, feeling the pressure very quickly of the 14 of Dan Angelicchio. Holtgraver and Angelicchio nearly make contact on the front straight, battling for the third spot as Jason Ryder is quickly around Chris Angelicchio into second. Leader Mike Sasir, a former late model veteran and limited late model track champion of 2006. The 1K of Jim Kudis slings to the inside. Trying to crack the top five, he is gaining on the double zero of Holtgraver, the young driver. Holtgraver's still a teenager. Jim Kudis not exactly that as he takes the inside lane to a top five. Battle for fourth in front of him heats up. 14 car of Dan Angelicchio, the 54 of Chris Angelicchio. An all Angelicchio battle for third. Chris on the high side, Dan the former pavement late model racer on the inside. Kudas gaining on both of them as they were door to door for an entire lap halfway through this eight lap heat race for the Brockers Machine Shop Great Late Models. Dan Angelicchio takes the third position from Chris. And here comes Kudas to challenge on the inside of Chris Angelicchio. Three wide in turn four, battling for mid pack positions. Holtgraver falling back. Holtgraver loses three spots in one lap in the double zero car. And the 14 of Dan Angelicchio goes up in smoke in turn number four, did a great job to save the car from making hard outside wall contact and rolling to a stop after a puff of smoke and some flame. Angelicchio's machine nearly out of control and he drifted up toward the wall, may have made light contact, but he did a fantastic job of saving that machine from serious damage. To begin the final three laps of this second and final crate late model heat race, green flag back out, and Kudas, who started deep in the field in the 1K car, passed both Angelicchio's. He passed the 76 of Ryder now for second and maybe closing in on leader Mike Sisir. Kudas from deep in this field has passed nearly every car on the speedway and running one groove lower than Sisir, the two veterans see the signal of two laps to go. Mike Sisir in 35, Jim Kudas in 1K, Ryder all by himself in third now. White flag will be shown this time by. Drivers in the field with the most experience coming to the front. And a miscue by Kudas allows Ryder to close the gap just a little bit. Top five strung out on the speedway. Final lap, the 2006 Brockers Machine Shop Great Late Model Champion. 
Mike Sisir will take the checkered flag over Jim Kudis in second. Jason Ryder in third. The 75 of Scott Shemp up to fourth. Eight laps the distance. Gasser and the 17 car. J.E. Stalder in a tight battle for the second position with the six car of Carl McKinney, the steel block late model competitor. McKinney, a longtime EMOD veteran and Lynn Geisler crew member, also now a limited late model chauffeur. Tonight he unloads the EMOD and closes in on Kerry Gasser for the lead. Wheel to wheel out of turn number four. Carl McKinney on the inside, Kerry Gasser on the outside. As the 17 of Stalder is off the pace. J.E. Stalder loses three positions. But up front, wheel to wheel, the leaders, Kerry Gasser still officially hanging on to the point position by a car length at the scoring line. 71M of Mike Bastich into the second spot. We got a spin in turn four. Spin in turn four. It's the 48 car of David Mercer from Burgettstown. And Nakudis joins the tail of the field after the spin in turn four. Five laps remaining. Green flag out. Kerry Gasser and Carl McKinney continue the fight for the lead. Nearly going three wide for the top spot in turn one. It was the 17 M of Matika. He falls back to third. Basich was in the third spot before the caution flag, so a great restart for Matika. And Kerry Gasser gets about a three or four car length advantage over McKinney. They were fighting wheel to wheel those first three green flag laps. And on the restart, Kerry Gasser powers away in the 0K car. Carl McKinney in the 6M car has been a winner this season at the Tri-City Speedway in Franklin. As McKinney still about three or four car lengths back, best battle is for fifth, wheel to wheel on the back straight. The 17 of J.E. Stalder and the 65 of Tom Martinek. Still wheel to wheel out of turn number four. Nearly a dead heat at the scoring line in the battle for the fifth position. Martinek in the 65 completes the pass now. He is into the fifth spot. Lead battle intensifies just a bit in turn four. McKinney closes the gap down to about two car lengths at the wave of the white flag. McKinney going all the way to the top side in turns one and two and building up a good run down the back straight. It will not be enough into turns three and four. The last opportunity for McKinney to strike as the caution flag was his downfall in this event. Checkered flag waving for the zero K of Kerry Gasser getting the win over McKinney. Russ Matika in the third spot, Mike Basich in fourth, Tom Martinek in fifth. The eight of Willie Briggs, the 97 is George Nicola, the asphalt race car, and the five is Jim Nicola, the two-time Motordrome champion. Two pavement racing modified starting at the back of the field, but three wide is the battle for second. Wayne Tassine advances two spots in half a lap, and quickly the many-time champion challenges Jeff Taylor in the three. Taylor, one of the winningest EMOD drivers anywhere in the region throughout the late 1990s and the early part of this decade from Salzburg, Pennsylvania in the three. Tassine and then Chris Basich, the top three. Look at Tassine riding the rim to the outside in car 10. 
resident of the Buckeye State, but a champion of the Pennsylvania Motor Speedway six times in his career. Wheel to wheel with Jeff Taylor out of turn number four. Tassin takes over the lead on lap two. Jeff Taylor, the graduate of micro sprint racing into the second position with Chris Bassich moving to the high side of the three car. The 71 of Bassich, one of the brothers combination that compete here each and every week at Dirt's Monster Half Mile. The 4M of Kevin Miller making it a three car fight for the second position as Wayne Tassin checks out on the field in car 10. Taylor still holding on to the runner-up spot, then Bassage and Miller. Vince Laboon in the fifth position, five cars breaking away from the rest of the field. Tassin's lead is just about half a straightaway at the crossed flag, signaling four laps down, four to go. One of the pavement race cars, George Nicola, with a body problem as the hood blocks his view, entering the pits on the back straight. Now Kevin Miller taking away the third spot from Bassage tried a brief challenge of Taylor, but he had to get on the binders. He'll fall back into the fourth position now. Wheel to wheel down the front straight, Miller and Bassage. Miller took that spot away last lap, and when he tried to challenge Jeff Taylor on the back straight, had to get on the brakes. Let's see if he can mount another challenge of the three car headed into turn number three. To scene in another zip code with the lead in car 10. Taylor into second spot after leading lap one. Kevin Miller from middle of the pack up to third and challenging for second. Bassich riding fourth, Laboon in fifth. In turn two, close enough to make contact are Miller and Taylor with Taylor fighting off the challenge, hanging on to the second position. White flag waving this time for Wayne to scene in car number 10 from Austintown, Ohio, the longtime veteran with a full straightaway advantage over a heated battle for second with Miller in the 4M and Taylor in the three. Taylor goes in a groove and a half higher this time and surrenders the runner up position on the back straightaway. Out of turn four, six time track champion, Wayne Tessin takes the checkered flag. The 4M car of Kevin Miller will take second over Jeff Taylor, Chris Bassich, and Vince Laboon. Last row made up of the nine of Jeff Hafke and the 34 of Rich Nicola starting scratch. Three wide, the battle for the lead in turn two. Charlier all the way to the top of the speedway. Bamitz rider on the bottom. And Charlier's into the wall. He had a problem in his limited late model heat race, now bouncing off the guardrail through turns three and four. Charlier falls back to fifth after taking the initial lead in a three wide pass. 74 of Bamitz Rider now out in front. The 18 of Bruce Drystadt feeling the pressure of Hawkins in the 37. They nearly make contact. Drystadt with a tough luck 2007 season. Picked up the feature win last Saturday night here and battling with the other feature winner from the Double Dip EMOD event last Saturday, Bamitz Rider in 74. The 18 of Drystadt. And look at Hawkins in the 37, taking over second position. His father, a champion of the Interstate Speedway and late model competition in their home state of West Virginia. And Hawkins has quickly closed up the gap to Bamitz Rider. Hawkins in car 37 has an older brother who won an IRS sanctioned super late model event last week and now takes the lead from Bamitz Rider. This time by we will begin to work lap number four of eight and at the crossed flags new leader is the driver of the 37 Jacob Hawkins. Bamitz Rider holds on to the second spot. Battle for third Charlier Climbing back into the fray, and again it's going to be three wide. Again it's Charlier in the outside groove. This time he takes the spot away from Drystadt in the 18 car, and at the same spot where he had problems before, he takes the runner-up position away from Bamitz Rider. Bamitz Rider dropping back, and Drystadt will fight to the scoring line to take over third spot officially on lap five. 
Hawkins way out in front as a result of the heated battle for second. Caution flag on the speedway. Yellow flag is out. A car has stopped to the inside guardrail in turns three and four. In this final Miley Truck Rental E-Mod heat race, green flag is out. Charlier and Hawkins both trying to use the high side of the speedway. And as Charlier spins in the loose dirt to the outside of the back straight, Hawkins finds a three or four car length advantage. In fact, Bamet's rider closing in on the second spot now. Hawkins checking out on the rest of the field. Charlier using the top of Dirt's Monster Half Mile. Bamet's rider using the bottom. They maintain second and third over Drystat. And the 9-H of Jeff Hafke. Hafke, the Ohio invader, in the 9-H car, holding down a top five position right now as he took that spot away from Clayton Kennedy on the restart. Checkered flag will wave for the 37 of Jacob Hawkins, getting the win over the 12 of Charlier. The 18 of Bruce Drystadt taking away third at the wave of the checkers over Bamitz Rider in the 74. And coming home in fifth, the nine of Jeff Hafke. Eight laps the distance for the Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stocks. Outside of row one. Jim Bendishaw in the seven car is right there with the 380 of Pat Hanley. Double zero car, a late entry. We have no name on the leader. Sixty-seven, of course, Danny Rich into the fourth spot. So it's Pat Hanley in the 380 challenging a nameless driver for the lead. I'll let you in on a secret, race fans. Drivers hate paperwork. We have no name on the leader, but the 380 car of Pat Hanley takes over the point position. Tim Fulmer, the driver of the double zero. Tim Fulmer loses the lead and is quickly challenged for second by the 67X of Danny Rich. Damage incorporated on the move into the second spot. Fight for the lead is Danny Rich side by side with Pat Hanley. Fulmer into the third spot. Seven of Bendishaw is fourth. And door to door racing in the Sunoco race fuels pure stocks. Danny Rich on the inside, Pat Hanley on the outside. And Rich will take over the lead after starting mid pack with four laps completed of eight. Hanley not letting Rich run away with this one. Still going to be an advantage of just a couple of car lengths here on the front straight as they begin to work lap number five. Tim Fulmer in the double zero third. Tim Bendishaw is fourth. Nick Kachuba in the 10 is in the fifth position. Sixth, it's Mike Pegger Sr. in the 09 car, driving the Lernerville Championship machine, piloted by his son. Two laps to go now. Field strung out single file. Danny Rich in the 67 car. Not a regular competitor here at the Speedway this season. Took a couple weeks off during the course of 2007, but no stranger to Monster Half Mile as he takes the white flag over Pat Hanley.
final time around. Heat race number one for the Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stock in preparation for tonight's 15 lap feature event. Taking the checkered flag in 67X, it's Danny Rich over Pat Hanley in the 380. Tim Fulmer in the double zero. Battle for fourth, it will go to the seven of Jim Bendishaw over the 10 of Nick Kachuba in fifth. The eight car starting third is Robert Betts and then the 20 of Mitch Wadelet. Green flag is out. Door to door in the battle for the lead. Robertson will now be in the middle of three wide. Weldon on the high side. The eight of Betts into the third spot. Robertson has been to victory lane this season in the one car. Weldon in the high groove of the speedway. Weldon in 45 was challenging for the lead the last time they were in turn two. It seems like the eight car of Betts may be gaining. Heated action with the 27 of Steve Webb in the fourth spot. That's about a four car battle. Wadalette is there in the 20 car. Jake Simmons, another one of the damage incorporated entries right there in this four car battle for fourth, fifth and sixth positions. Looks like we might be going three wide here eventually. 50 car is Adam Kostelnik. That white 50 machine is a 30 time feature winner this season on asphalt racetracks and Adam Kostelnik part of a four car fight for fourth now. Jake Simmons dropping to the low side and gaining two positions in one lap. Simmons now into fourth. That four car battle is something to watch, but up front, Bill Robertson in the one car maintains about a three car length advantage over Pat Weldon's 45. A distant third is the eight of Robert Betts. Jake Simmons in fourth, the 20 car of Wadalette in fifth, and the battle for sixth, it's the 50 of Adam Kostelnik and the 27 of Steve Webb. Kostelnik gets the better of that fight in a rare dirt track start. Two laps to go now, the signal given to leader Robertson. Robertson first on the racetrack was third in the final championship point standings for 2007. And Jake Simmons, who is fourth on the racetrack, was fourth in the final point standings. White flag waving the 45 car of Pat Weldon. Looking like he will not be able to challenge for this heat race checkered flag. In turn number four from Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Another checkered flag for Bill Robertson getting the heat race win over Pat Weldon. The eight of Robert Betts, the 68 of Jake Simmons, and the 20 of Mitch Wadelet. We don't have a name on the 10 car at this time, but the 58 machine is Butch Lewandowski, and the 10 car is spinning. 60 of Brian Hutchko avoids him on the outside of turn two. Love to see the green flag stay out. 
Whoa, the 33 just blew an engine. 33 of Joey Catellis. Seventeen car of Ray Prolinsky into the third spot, or second spot, I should say. Mike, we're down to third, four cars. Oh, you never like to see a short field this way, especially with cars dropping out. And of the cars that are out there, the Chevy Malibu passing us on the front straightaway is the ten that we have no name for. Once again, I've said it before: race drivers hate to do paperwork. Gary Gatell is still in the lead. Brian Hutchko in second. Third in the 17 machine, Ray Prolinsky. Well, Austin, I appreciate you correcting me because I introduced the machine of Butch Lewandowski, and we understand that driver change made tonight with another Catellus behind the wheel. White flag is waving for the 58 of Butch Lewandowski. Sorry, Gary Catellus. 58 of Gary Catellus. Gary Catellus taking the checkered flag. Second will go to Brian Hutchko in the 60. Third to the 17 of Ray Prolinsky. Fourth to the no-name driver in the 10 car. They're coming around out of turn four. Last year's champion, Rich Mason, brings them to the line. Sean Graham into the third position. He's on the inside of Dusty Curry in turn one. Dusty Curry coming up on Rich Mason, the third. He'll take the lead in the back straightaway. Michael Reft and the 44 of Tyler Atkinson both around in turn three. Rich Mason, the third, still in the lead. Caution is out. The caution is out. They're coming out of turn four to the green flag. Dusty Curry on the outside. We have a bad start. We'll try this again. Here we go, coming out of turn four. Dusty Curry and Rich Mason bring him across the line. Dusty Curry into the lead in turn two. The 08 of Alec Bronishevsky in the third spot. He won second on the back straightaway. Sean Graham in the fourth position. It's a battle for fifth between Tyler Atkinson and Michael Reft. Whoa. Oh, Alec Bronishevsky into the wall hard out of turn four. Caution is out. Rich Mason III still with the lead. Here we go, coming out of turn four, it's three wide. With Sean Graham in the middle, Dusty Curry on the outside, Rich Mason on the inside. It's a battle for the first position. It looks to be Dusty Curry coming down the back straightaway. Sean Graham's in second. Michael Reft and Rich Mason battling for the third position. 
It's three wide out of turn four with Michael Reft on the inside. Meanwhile, Dusty Curry seems to pull away. Oh, Michael Reft slides up the track a bit. Last year's champion, Rich Mason, still in second. Third is Michael Reft. In the fourth position is the 77 of Sean Graham. Fifth is the 44 of Tyler Atkinson. And Tyler is into the wall in turn four, spinning. Coming out of turn four, Dusty Curry in the lead with Sean Graham and Rich Mason battling on the inside. Sean Graham starts to pull away as Michael Reft and Rich Mason the third battling for the third position. Rich Mason on the inside of Michael Ref making the pass out of turn four. Ref seems to be on the car spinning on the front straightaway, right in front of Tyler Atkinson. He had nowhere to go. Dusty Curry and Sean Graham battling. But there's contact in turn two. First remain. White flag for Dusty. Twenty-three of Rich Mason the third into the pits. Dusty Curry in the eight Mighty Mouse. He's pulling away to take the last victory of the year. It's a drag race. And it's the nine R Michael Ref with the second position. Dusty, congratulations on your championship win. Uh, thank you. I'd just like to uh, commend Mike on Gardier Racing. He's been there behind me all year. He's done real good, well. But, um, as you can see, my car's for sale. If anyone would like to help or a 15 year old have a crack at the crate late models, they could call me or at 344-3999. 344-3999. Congratulations on your win tonight on the final victory for this season at PPMS? Yeah, the car held wherever I put it. I knew it had one more in it, but just got sideways a little bit, saved it. So everyone kept wrecking though, so it made it kind of hard on the restarts. Yeah, we were down to three cars at the final lap. There were only three cars left. It was you, Michael Reft, and Sean Graham. Yeah, I like them too, they're my friends. We hang out all the time. Just sucks that everyone else had to go. Congratulations tonight. As we get set to go, 25 laps for the 19th annual Pittsburgher Weekend Late Model Kickoff. Lou Bradish, Mark Bennell, Davey Johnson lead him to the stripe. Separating the four former track champions at the front of this field is third place riding Bart Hartman up front, the 0-9. Getting the jump is Chester, West Virginia's Lou Bradish. Here comes Davey Johnson. We're three wide for the lead on lap one. Hartman in the urgent cash 75 takes over the point position. Bradish loses two spots in a single lap. Davey Johnson in the Malcuit Engines house car, number 79, powering into the second spot. 
15. Brian Burkhofer, heat race winner tonight, in fourth and challenging Bradish for third. He'll take that position away out of turn number four. Bart Hartman and Davey Johnson riding one and two as former Pittsburgher event winners. Here comes Burkhofer challenging Johnson to the outside for the runner-up spot. The Pennsylvanian and the Iowan battling for runner-up honors behind Ohio's Bart Hartman. Working lap number three, and Johnson holds on by less than a car length to the bridesmaid position. Burkhofer dominated his heat race earlier tonight and now takes over second spot. Hartman the leader, Burkhofer second, Davey Johnson in third. Lou Bradich in fourth, Jared Miley the reigning champion in fifth. Mark Bunnell is sixth, Keith Barbara the heat race winner is seventh. Working lap number four of 25. Up front, Zanesville, Ohio's Bart Hartman, the 2004 Pittsburgher winner in car 75. The son of a legendary USAC and ARCA stock car competitor, his late father, Butch Hartman, many times a champion at St. Clairsville Speedway, a star series feature winner and national touring series traveler on pavement and dirt. It's Hartman over, over Burkhofer, then Johnson, Jared Miley in the H1 car. Last week, his feature victory sealed up the first track championship of his young career. And Jared Miley has already passed multiple time track champion Lou Bradich. He's closing in on the 79 of Davey Johnson in turns three and four. Working lap number seven of 25, all eyes on the fight for third. In turn number two, the H1 of Jared Miley from South Park, Pennsylvania. And the 79 of Davey Johnson from Latrobe, door to door in turn three. Miley grabs the position. Miley won his heat race earlier tonight, as did the second place car of Burkhofer. With leader Bart Hartman now in heavy lap traffic on the back straight, the 75 car has to back off. Working lap number eight, Brian Burkhofer closing in on the leader in heavy traffic. Burkhofer in the B15 to the outside. Bart Hartman locked to the inside with the 21 car of Leo Stadelman. They finally move around the back markers. Hartman with only a glimpse of clear racetrack as he's closing in on the six of Jim Lepro and the 13 of Steve Wilmoth. Two wide lap traffic in front of the leaders now. Burkhofer closing right to the rear bumper of Hartman. Hartman threads the needle on the front straight into turn number one. Former Pittsburgher event winner. Distancing himself by five or six car lengths now from the 2002 World 100 champion, Brian Burkhofer. Clear racetrack for about a lap and a half in front of the leaders now, and Burkhofer has a clear shot three car lengths behind leader Bart Hartman. Still riding in the third spot, the H1 of Jared Miley. In fourth, the 09 of Louis Bradich. And now in turn four, the lap traffic again looming in front of the leaders, Hartman drifting up to the Kyle Lukon number one car, diving beneath him in turn number one. Kyle Lukon, the limited late model champion here at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway for 2007, goes a lap down. And now Hartman slings to the inside of former track champion Ben Miley from Venetia. Working lap number 13 of 25. Hartman and Burkhofer running away from the rest of this field. Jared Miley all by himself in third. On the front straight, Burkhofer again with clear racetrack between himself and leader Hartman. They're closing in on the 40 of Dutch Davies. And Hartman stayed in the low groove that time through turns two, and Burkhofer gained significant ground on the leader. Burkhofer using the middle of the racetrack. Hartman all the way on the bottom, closing in on the back marker of Dutch Davies in car number 40. Hartman down the front straight stretches out his lead to about three or four car lengths, and now has to slam on the brakes. Here comes Burkhofer charging out of turn two down the back straight. 
contact made in the lead battle between Bark Hartman and Brian Burkhofer. Still Dutch Davies looming in front of the leaders. Both drivers at the front of this field have won feature events with the World of Outlaws. Both have won features with the Lucas Oil Series. Both have won with the now defunct Hava Tampa and Stars Racing Series. And two of the nation's best are duking it out for the lead in tonight's 25 lapper. They trade lanes on the speedway. Burkhofer to the low side for the first time. Dutch Davies throws a pick for Bart Hartman, who's now using the top of the monster half mile. On lap 17, caution free to this point. Bart Hartman leading Brian Burkhofer. Jared Miley in third. Fourth, Lou Bradich. And now Hartman all the way up to the cushion, riding the rim after using the low side of the speedway for 16 laps. Closing in on the 91 of Tommy Beck and Rodney Schweitzer spins in front of the leaders. Burkhofer hard on the brakes and avoids contact. We'll need a caution flag. Represented in the top four drivers. Hartman in car 75 with a Delaware style restart chooses the outside lane and lights up the tires. Green flag back out. Keith Barbara in the black 17 car makes a charge around Brandon Burgoon and Lou Bradich. Barbara gains two positions on that restart, advancing into the fourth position. Bart Hartman returns to the high side after racing about the first 16 laps on the bottom. He only spent about a lap and a half in the top group before that caution flag. Now in the middle of the speedway, Brian Burkhofer and Bart Hartman pulling away from Jared Miley. Keith Barbara, heat race winner, up to fourth now after taking the green flag in sixth last lap, working lap number 19 at the scoring line now. With six to go, Lynn Geisler, the former track champion, retires from competition. On the move now, the 0-2 of former champion Al Atella. As Lou Bradich drops back, Atella passes Burgoon for the fifth position. The 0-2 car up into the top five, and the lead battle intensifies. In turn number two, Brian Burkhofer. The low side of the speedway, Bart Hartman in the 75 using the middle group. Hartman drops down about a lane this time in turns three and four, but he can hear Burkhofer. Two of the nation's finest locked in a fight for tonight's $1,500 paycheck. Another former track champion, Dave Wade, pulls the Yangling 76 car pit side. Hartman took the lead early. Burkhofer started in row three, up to the second spot now. Three laps remaining. Ben Miley, another former track champion, dropping off the pace. The leaders pass by the Pink Panther at Hartman's lead, the biggest it's been in recent laps, opening up a seven or eight car length advantage headed to turn three. Signal of two laps to go. Jared Miley by himself in third. Al Atella in fifth, looking to challenge Keith Barbara for fourth in the final two circuits. Lap traffic will be a factor before the checkered flag waves. Leaders enter turn number three. Hartman in 75, Burkhofer in B15. They close in on the 81 of DJ Miller. Now passing the 13 of Steve Wilmoth here on the final lap. Hartman down the back straight. The 2004 Pittsburgher winner taking the checkered flag. It's Bart Hartman over Brian Burkhofer. Jared Miley will place third. Battle for fourth is won by Keith Barbara over Al Atella. He can hear you now. Ladies and gentlemen, Bart Hartman. Well, Bart Hartman, 
You didn't win your heat race, and that guy that was running second to you for most of the feature event, he stormed away from that heat race. Were you saving a little something in that preliminary? Because clearly, early in the night, the 15 car was much faster than anything out on the speedway. Or did you guys make some adjustments before feature time? Well, that's one of the reasons we're here tonight. We've made a lot of adjustments, even from hot laps to the heat. And then we tried some stuff in the feature we've never done here. And it works pretty good. Um, we're still a little bit not getting in the way I'd like to, but we got the drive coming off. So... You know, the rocket chassis with the Cornette power, the Olin shocks, and uh, the Hoosier racing tires are really good tonight. You have to like the Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, and I say that because of the years that you dominated Mineral Well Speedway, another big, fast half mile. Would you classify yourself as sort of a dirt track super speedway guy? Well, you know, sometimes you go to these big tracks, you run good, but other times you don't. I just, you know, I'm fortunate when we run well, and there's times that we don't, but I tend to like the bigger tracks. I was going to ask you or Brian Burkhoff for this same question in Victory Lane tonight, so here it comes. When is the last time that a former dirt track world champion superstar like yourself unloaded the race car for a $1,500 paycheck? Well, a couple of times this year, actually. <laughs> so we've been trying to race around home a little more so we can get with our fans. And, you know, the cost of everything for the fans and the racers, we've been trying to stick around, you know, two and a half, three hours from the house. But, uh, you know, we're going to start getting out a little bit further now. And a chance to thank all the sponsors that help you to finance this fast ride. Oh, yeah. You know, Urgent Cash is one of the biggest supporters I have. And if it wasn't for him, I couldn't do this. But all the product people, Steve Baker, Rocket Chassis, uh, Cornette. Uh, you know, like I said, Jason's here from Olin Chocks. We're doing a little tuning with him this weekend and uh, just trying some stuff different. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, kicking off the 19th annual Pittsburgher Weekend with a victory tonight, Bart Hartman. Rockers Machine Shop Crate Late Models. Chris Angelicchio, Daryl Charlier in row one. Track champion Kyle Lucon and Scott Shemp in row two. Full speed to turn number one. Angelicchio with an early lead, three wide in the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Jason Ryder comes out of that with the fourth position. Daryl Charlier in car 12. Challenging for the lead. We're going to go four wide for top positions in turn four. Charlier takes over the point, reaching the scoring line for lap number one over Angelicchio Lucon. And Ryder all the way to the bottom in car 76. Daryl Charlier opens up a lead advantage of about eight car lengths over Angelicchio. And the protege of Dave Wade by the name of Jason Ryder with the 76 car powering to the inside of young Kyle Lucon, the track champion for this season. Ryder takes over third and quickly pulls door to door with Angelicchio in a fight for the second position. Three cars under a blanket fighting it out for top five positions. Just behind them, it's Jim Kudis. And this time, Lucon is pushed all the way up to the wall and the leader drops off the pace. Charlier with his hand out the window, a mechanical problem. Hands the lead to Jason Ryder's 76 car. Ryder gains two positions in one lap and we'll need a caution flag for the ailing 12 of Daryl Charlier. Three of 20 laps completed. And a rough start on the front straight, three and four wide. Scott Shemp gets shoved to the inside, but the green flag will wave. Rocky Kugel involved in an incident here on the front straight with Dave Johnson and Josh Holtgraver. Caution flag back out. Leader Jason Ryder chooses the outside lane for the restart of Chris Angelicchio on the inside, 17 laps to go. Jim Kudis in the black number one. Track champion Kyle Lucon in the purple and yellow number one. Green flag back out, three wide battle for second out of turn two down the back straight. Jim Kudis in the 1K. Former super late model driver challenging young Kyle Lucon as Angelicchio falls back to fourth. And coming up the bottom of the speedway, Tommy Schoenhofer in the 28. 
Schoenhofer's made some laps around this speedway in his career. He's got young Kyle Lukon in front of him, and he's pulling away from the Scott Schimpf battle for the fifth position. Schoenhofer in fourth, Kyle Lukon in third, Jim Kudis in second, leader Jason Ryder in the 76, opening up a 12 or 15 car length advantage, working lap number five of 20. Best battle on the speedway is for the sixth position, heat race winner Mike Sassir the former track champion. Powers to the inside of Scott Shemp. They're door to door in turn four. And Sasir, after spinning to avoid a stopped car in front of him on the first lap, makes his way inside the top five around Scott Shemp. Right there with Shemp. It's the B4 of Steve Beatty. 54 of Angelicchio slipping back through the field after racing in the top three in the early stages of this one. Working lap number seven now, a big lead for Jason Ryder. Jim Kudis in second, and for the moment, track champion Kyle Luke on his third, but Tommy Schoenhofer had a great run on him. We got a caution flag. Car stopped in turns three and four. False start has maintained a higher pace and again jumps on the loud pedal from the high groove of the speedway in the Delaware style restart. This time Jimmy Kudis right with them in the 1K and Kudis will not only fall back away from the rear bumper of Ryder, he will lose the second position to Kyle Lukon briefly down the back straight. Mike Sasir has now passed two more cars and heat race winner in the 35 climbing through this field. Contact between the one cars. The 1K of Jimmy Kudis. And the one star of Kyle Lukon. They traded stickers on the front straight and Kudis officially maintains the second position. Ryder all by himself out front. Kudis in second, Lukon in third. And now Schoenhofer makes hard contact with Sasir in the 35. Mike Sasir started mid-pack and climbed into the fourth position. Now Tommy Schoenhofer. The 28 car bangs doors with Sasir. Sasir loses one spot and numerous car lengths. Just behind those two, Steve Beatty in the B4 is in the sixth position. Car stopping in turn four at the pit entrance. I believe that's the 09 of Louis Bradage. Caution flag for the 09 of Louis Bradage, the second generation driver stopped outside of turn four. And tempers may be flaring between the 35 of Mike Sasir and the 28 of Tommy Schoenhofer. Both veteran drivers and they made hard contact fighting for top five positions just a moment ago. Keep your eyes on the 35 of Sasir and the 28 of Schoenhofer. They've traded paint once. Here's the green flag. Half the race still to go. We're three wide on the front straight. Again, Kuda sticks right with Ryder until turn number two. And again, Lukon able to gain on Kudis on the back straight following a restart. Sasir has passed Schoenhofer. And Russ Kolasar, the man on the move now. Kolasar on the outside, just about to go three wide. Kolasar has passed Scott Shemp in 75. He's passed Tommy Schoenhofer in 28. He's passed the 35 of Mike Sasir. And veteran Kolasar looking to challenge Kyle Lukon for third spot in his car 27. The Froggy Radio sponsored machine of veteran Russ Kolasar using the high side of the speedway and gaining several positions in just a few laps. Jason Ryder opening up a big lead once again over Jim Kudis. In third, Kyle Lukon. Fourth, it's Kolasar. Sasir beginning to gain just a little bit on the 27 car now. And look at the run Lukon has in the battle for second this time in turn two. Kudis staying on the bottom all the way down the back straightaway until he fades up just a bit to enter turn three and Lukon 
maintains a full head of steam in the middle of the speedway. Lukon takes away the runner-up spot. We're working lap 14 of 20. Jason Ryder still in front. Kyle Lukon now in second with Kudis in third. And Kolasar in car 27 is also gaining on Kudis. Mike Sassir falling back just a bit in the fifth position. Here comes Kolasar on the high side of the speedway, challenging Jimmy Kudis. Two longtime veterans of Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway slugging it out for third spot. After winning his heat race tonight, Russ Kolasar, who's already been to victory lane in 2007, valiantly battling from a mid-pack starting spot into the podium position of third now around Jimmy Kudis. And Kudis falling back as here comes the 35 of Sasir. Problem in turn number four. A car stopped, I believe it's the B4 of Steve Beatty. Steve Beatty's B4 car brings out the caution in turn four, and then we've got a spin in turns one and two. It's the three of Westover. And the seven of Kugel. I think the caution flag may have already come out. I believe the B4 of Steve Beatty brought out the caution flag in turn four before the incident in turns one and two. Polisar can stay with Ryder on the restart the way Kudis did early in this event. Lukon dives to the inside, headed to turn number one. And Jason Ryder has struggled with restarts all night in turn one. Lukon got the bumper out in front of the 76, but Ryder powers away with the lead again on the back straight. Four laps to go, and Russ Kolasar will be battling with Lukon for the runner-up position as they approach the scoring line. To begin working lap number 17, Kyle Lukon holds on to second by a full car length over Kolasar. Kudis in the 1K trying to join the battle again. And the fight for second place Close enough to trade paint, Kolasar the veteran, and Lukon, the young track champion of 07. Two laps to go, the signal given to Jason Ryder, opening up a big lead once again. We were three wide out of turn four that time with Sasir, Kudis, and Kolasar. Drivers in third, fourth, and fifth on the speedway have more years of racing combined than the ages of many of the young Lions in this division, all veteran competitors in third, fourth, and fifth with young Kyle Lukon in second as the white flag waves. Kolasar and Sasir now battling for third as Lukon opens up a five or six car length advantage over that fight. Sasir diving to the bottom, taking away the third spot. Kolasar only briefly looked at a podium finish, now falls back to fourth out of turn number four. For the fourth time this season, Jason Ryder takes the checkered flag in car 76 over Kyle Lukon. Mike Sasir, Russ Kolasar, and Jim Kudis completing the top five. Well, Jason, you've had enough, you've had enough victory lane interviews that we can have some fun with you. Uh, how many features do you need to win before you'll remember that the scales are the first stop before the photo session? You know what? He went like this, and I thought he was pointing me off. I guess he's calling me on, but. <laughs> Well, you're here now. The good news is the car made weight. You got your snack products. You got your Pepsi products there. First, tell us about this race car, the sponsors, and the crew that make it so fast. You know what? I want to thank Swagger Drilling, because I always forget the man, Bernie. He's my man. Hey, I especially Termite Services, Dave Wade Auto Service, Kafka Auto Service, and Dave Wade. Uh, Dave Wade, I've called him your mentor all evening. And tell us about how your relationship with him got started. As a super late model champion, you turn the wrenches once in a while on that late model, don't you? Oh yeah, we're neighbors and I just started hanging around the garage and he decided to, you know, get a car together for me and just been doing it ever since. Great job tonight. Congratulations on a win to kick off Pittsburgher weekend for the Crate Late Models, Jason Ryder in car 76. 17th, the nine of George Nicola starting 18th as we get set to go. 15 laps for the Miley Truck Rental E-Mods. Jeff Taylor and Bruce Drystad lead them to the green. Three wide all through the field. And Drystad has to back off the hammer. More three wide. Charlier runs into the back bumper of him. Chaos at the front of the field. And 
the 17M of Matika comes through with the lead on lap number one. Kevin Miller in the 4M challenging quickly for the lead, wheel to wheel on the back stretch. Look at this fight at the front. Drivers that did not start on the front row duking it out for the lead as we begin to work lap number two out of turn number four. And by inches, Miller becomes the official leader of lap two. Kevin Miller now over the 17M of Russ Matika. In third spot, Bruce Drystad. Daryl Charlier all the way up against the outside retaining wall, closing quickly on Drystadt. The 6M of McKinney making hard contact on the front straight with Drystadt. McKinney with an impressive heat race performance tonight in his first start of the season. He's a Tri-City feature winner this year, and he's got Daryl Charlier to the outside of him. Charlier, who just had a nightmare of a feature in the limited late models, surrendering the lead with a mechanical problem, then spinning later in the event. We're three wide out of four. Matika from second to fourth in one lap. Charlier riding the rim of the speedway up top. McKinney on the bottom battling for second, about a third of a straightaway behind Kevin Miller in the 4M from Toronto, Ohio. Drystadt, the pole starter, dropping out of this event, working lap number five of 15. Heartbreak for the feature winner a week ago. Miller up front, Charlier in the second spot, but we got a caution flag. The 10 of Wayne Tassin, the track champion, falling out of a top five position as he rolls to a stop on the back straight. Then it's Hawkins and Taylor as we get set to go, 10 more laps for the Miley Truck Rental E-Mods. And McKinney takes away the second position as Charlier falls back a few car lengths, getting up to the top groove of the speedway. McKinney not only pulls away from Charlier, but pulls door to door with race leader Kevin Miller. Fight for the lead out of turn four. We got a caution flag. Caution is out. 57 of Stush Sadowski moving slow on the back straight, as is George Nicola's 97. Didn't see an incident happen watching the lead battle, but Stush Sadowski moving very slow in the 57. As he was challenging the 4M of Miller for the lead as the restart heads to turn number one once again. Charlier in the 12, sticking right with the lead duo this time. And again, McKinney uses the middle groove to power around Miller. Charlier taking over the second position from the 4M car now. Kerry Gasser is fourth in the 0K. Battle for fifth, it's Russ Matika and Jacob Hawkins in the 37. Top five strung out now right in the center of the racetrack is where Carl McKinney is getting a bite in the 6M car. All the way at the top against the guardrail is where the 12 of Daryl Charlier is happiest to race. Both of those drivers pulling away from Miller who had built up a big lead prior to the caution flag. Miller is third, Kerry Gasser is fourth. Carl McKinney right in the center of the racetrack. That is an excellent handling race car as Charlier in the 12 continues to gain ground on him with the right rear in the cushion. Only a couple of car lengths separate the leaders down the back straight, working lap number seven into turns three and four, and McKinney drifts up a little higher on the speedway this time. He was too late to try and block Charlier, but he maintains the lead at the scoring line, working lap number eight. This time, Charlier just about brushes the guardrail in turn two. Those two drivers opening up a half a straightaway advantage over Miller in third. 
with Kerry Gasser gaining on him from fourth. Carl McKinney in car 6M. Lynn Geisler, late model crew member. Fast track late model driver and EMOD winner at tracks in the area like Tri-City Speedway in Franklin, making what I believe is his first start here at the Monster Half Mile this season. And again, using one lane higher on the speedway through turns three and four, Charlier in the 12 car, probably a couple miles per hour quicker, but using the 5 8 mile version of Dirt's Monster Half Mile all the way at the rail. Working lap 11, we've got a spin. Leaders approaching the spin area. Carl McKinney diving up to the guardrail and gets clipped by the 57 of Stush Sadowski. 34 of Jim Nicola, also part of that incident, but McKinney tried to squeak by on the outside and was hit by the 57 of Stadowski, whose car had just spun. After taking a hit from Stush Sadowski's 57, will Daryl Charlier be able to climb to the outside groove and make a winning pass? Will Kerry Petrosky in the OK get by the 4M of Miller and challenge the leaders? Three wide in the fight for third. Jacob Hawkins on the outside. Kevin Miller in the middle. Kerry Gasser on the bottom. Hawkins gains two positions on the restart. Charlier takes up his chase of the leader on the high side, and McKinney's machine appears to be handling just like it did before the impact. Daryl Charlier this time with his top speed on the back straight after using the high lane through turns one and two, getting closer to McKinney up front. Two laps to go, the signal given this time. And Charlier is in second by only inches. It was the front bumper of the 6M car that keeps him scored officially out in front on lap 13 of 15. Now Charlier with a full car length advantage. McKinney in the middle of the speedway where he's run all night, leaving the high lane for Charlier to take the white flag and the lead on the final lap. Very close to the outside retaining wall, Charlier may have just sealed victory by pulling away three or four car lengths. Out of turn number two, the fight for third, it's Hawkins just barely over Gasser. And now in turns three and four for the final time, the leaders still wheel to wheel. Daryl Charlier redeems himself after a disastrous crate late model feature to take the win from Carl McKinney on the final lap. Jacob Hawkins finishes third over Kerry Gasser in fourth. Kevin Miller in fifth after leading laps in this event. Well, Daryl, there's lots of good news to talk about, but I want to go back just about 15 minutes, talk about the bad news. Took the lead in the Crate Late Model feature event. What happened to the race car as you slowed on the front straight? Uh, well, we made some changes for the feature, and... Uh, the rear tires were getting a little more movement than what uh, we thought and ended up blowing both of them out. Two flat tires on the crate late model, so you had to come in and pit, then came back out for a spin. When you get in the race car after a feature like that, are you angry? Do you have to calm yourself down? Do you have to refocus after a disastrous race like that to come out and win? Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. you got to try not to let any of that stuff get to you and just concentrate on the task at hand and hopefully uh, for a better night. Talk about concentration. Let's talk about the caution flag incident in turn three that you and leader McKinney had to just squeak by. Did you make any contact at all with those spinning race cars? No, I, uh, I just squeaked right through there. A little bit of luck never hurts either. How about a chance to thank the sponsors and crew for making this ride so fast and taking it to the front at the end of the feature? I definitely want to thank the crew because uh, they've been really working hard this past month. A lot of bad luck, so they really needed this one. And uh, I need to thank W.J. Beitler Warehouse uh, Knuckleheads Pizza, Tri-State Motorsports, Totally Tropical Tanning, uh, Beitler, uh, Bose Communications, and uh, Napa. There he is, race fans. He made that one a thriller in the top lane of the speedway, leading the final two laps, Daryl Charlier. Fifteen laps for the Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stocks. Green flag is out.
Looks like a parade lap, two by two, all the way through turns number three. Now we're going to go three wide in the middle of the pack. Up front, Nick Kachuba, the early race leader. Then three wide, the battle with Simmons on the inside. The 20 of Waddlet in the middle. And the seven of Vendishaw outside. They were three wide for over half a lap, battling for second behind Kachuba, who's got a five or six car length advantage now. Cars making contact in the fight for top five positions. Might be four wide there in turn four, and we are. The 20 of Waddle that has to back off, and that stacks him up behind him. 380 of Pat Hanley gets some rear bumper contact from the double O of Fulmer. Repercussions of one car backing off. Down to the bottom, here comes Danny Rich challenging Bill Robertson. That's the battle for about the sixth position right there. In second place, Jim Bendishaw over Simmons and Weldon. Simmons close enough to touch the rear bumper of Bendishaw. Then the 45 of Weldon. Those three drivers all had terrific heat race performances. Simmons teammate, Danny Rich, trying to crack the top five. Three wide in the fight for second, three wide in the fight for positions on back in the top five. The eight car of Robert Betts is surrounded by Robertson and Rich. A couple of drivers familiar with victory lane here at the Monster Half Mile. That's the fight for the fifth position, but the battle for second is door to door with the 45 of Weldon and the seven of Bendishaw. Bendishaw making his first start of the year in car seven. Simmons makes rear bumper contact with Bendishaw. Now we're going to go three wide again in the battle for fifth on the back straight. Danny Rich on the inside, Robertson on the middle, Betts on the high side. Three wide, and they're gaining the battle in front of them. Nick Kachuba had a six or seven car length advantage that has dwindled to almost nothing as the 45 of Pat Weldon from Monongahela closes in quickly. Now darts to the inside of the leader. Door to door for the first position. Door to door for third position. Working lap number six of 15. Weldon with a good run on the bottom. Kachuba holds his ground up top. Nearly a dead heat at the scoring line. Working lap number seven now. Caution flag as the eight of Betts spins on the front straightaway. And the 27W of Steve Webb gets into the outside retaining wall, trying to avoid contact. Heavy front end damage to Webb's 27 car, but that certainly is better than taking a head-on hit as he just narrowly avoided the aid of Robert Betts from Moon Township here on the front straight. As Nick Kachuba in car number 10, Delaware-style restart, brings him back to the green flag, six laps down, 15 laps the distance, we're back underway. Three wide with teammates Danny Rich and Jake Simmons. Pat Hanley on the outside of that three wide. Robertson in the one car quickly challenging the number seven machine of Bendishaw. And up front, Pat Weldon in the 45 car not letting Kachuba open up more than a two car length advantage. Robertson gaining a spot on the restart in the one B car. Up to third and here comes the 380 of Pat Hanley. Of this group of race cars fighting at the front, Hanley in the 380 car started farthest back in the field. He's up to fourth. He's door to door with Bendishaw's seven machine. In turn number two, we have a spin. 44 car will bring out the caution flag. In the first seven laps. Bendishaw, the first time starter in fifth. Green flag is out. And look at this, a challenge for the lead. It's not the 45, it's the one of Robertson. Robertson vaults from third to first. Moving around race long leader Nick Kachuba with ease and opening up a five car length advantage at the signal of halfway. 
It looked to be Weldon battling with the 10 of Kachuba for the lead, and before they could resume their fight, Bill Robertson storms around the outside, taking over the lead and running away with this event on lap number eight. Side by side, Weldon and Kachuba with Pat Hanley gaining quickly in the 380 car. Mike Pegger Sr. heads to the pit area. Three car fight for second position. 45, Pat Weldon, Nick Kachuba in the 10. The 380 of Pat Hanley. And just behind them, teammates are fighting. 67 of Danny Rich, 68 of Jake Simmons. Those teammates looking to surround the seven of Bendishaw. They will be three wide out of turn two on the back straight. Weldon in command of the second spot now. Hanley fighting with Kachuba for third and then a three car, make it a four car fight as asphalt champion Adam Kostelnik in the 50 car is gaining on the damage incorporated teammates and the seven of Bendishaw. Three wide still in front of Kostelnik's 50 car. Now Bendishaw surrenders the position to teammates Jake Simmons in 68, Danny Rich in 67. Bill Robertson all by himself with more than a half straightaway advantage over the 45 of Pat Weldon. The 380 of Pat Hanley is third. In fourth, it's Nick Kachuba who led the early stages of this event and gaining quickly on him, Danny Rich. Challenge in turn three with Danny Rich trying to find racing room on the inside. Kachuba can't slam the door on him and out of turn four, door to door on the front straight. Battle for fourth position, it will be Danny Rich taking command of fourth, headed into turn number one. Kachuba battles back on the outside now. They are still door to door. Signal of final lap to Bill Robertson with a straightaway lead as the second place car surrenders his spot, slowing out of turn four. Pat Weldon of Monongahela in car 45 will roll to a stop on the front straight. Pat Weldon in 45 might be thinking he's having a bad night as he surrenders the second spot. And there is clearly some fluid coming from that race car. Green is back out for Robertson up front. Side by side, briefly in turns one and two, the 380 of Pat Hanley. Here comes Danny Rich. Double zero of Tim Fulmer was hard into the back straight wall, but he continues on. Robertson by only about a car length and a half sees the white flag. Rich is now in third position, passing the 10 of Kachuba. He started 10th, he's up to third. The driver who started in eighth is up to second. That's Pat Hanley in 380. He has a half a lap to challenge Bill Robertson from Upper St. Clair for the victory. The 1B car hanging tough out front. Turn four, last lap. It will be Robertson with another checkered flag over Hanley, Rich, Kachuba, Simmons, and Bendishaw. Well, Bill, this division's known for a lot of side-by-side -side terrific competition. And you took the lead so easily, I didn't even see you coming. It was one quick move. You went from third to first in about half a lap there. Tell us about that. I, I was watching Nick. He was sort of trying to block uh, Pat Weldon from the bottom, and he left the top wide open. And I just went in there and just hoped it was going to stick, and it did. Have you won an event during Pittsburgh or weekend before in your career? No, most of the time I don't even finish the race. <laughs> and how many career wins is this for you? Uh, counting pure or amateur stocks, uh, somewhere around 11 or 12. Well, with a dozen victories, let's give you a chance to thank the crew and sponsors. Uh, I thank my crew, Josh, Jim, Nate, uh, my dad, uh, my sponsors, NJ and Associates, Mad Custom Exhaust, uh, Schwartzmiller Ground Maintenance, Imperial Tire and Automotive, 
Pearl Heights Garage, Washington's Landing Marina. There he is, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Robertson. Turn it over to Austin, here we go, Green. Coming out of turn four, it's the 58 of Gary Catellis. 17 of Ray Prolinsky on the inside of JJ O'Patchen in turn two. JJ O'Patchen keeps it off the wall in turn four. I it's think still Gary Catellis, then Brian Hutchko, JJ O'Patchen, and Ray Polinski. I'm starting to like my meeting idea where everybody gets a turn to lead. Brian Hutchko and JJ O'Patchen into the wall in turn four. Some quick math, 50% of the field just hit the outside wall. <laughs> 25% of the field is a straight away ahead. That's, that's Gary Catellis. I'm gonna make a prediction. There will be more contact in this feature event. I know there's four cars, but there will be paint traded before the end of this one. Eight laps to go. Gary Cattell is still ahead by a straightaway in the yellow and black 58 machine. J.J. Patchen lets out of the throttle in the front straightaway. Gary Catellis coming out of turn four to get the halfway signal. I predict a top five finish for every driver in the field. <laughs> the lime green and red car, Brian Hutchko still in the second position. The Bumblebee 58 of Gary Catellis still in the lead. While Brian Hutchko goes into turn one, Gary Catellis is coming out of turn two. Someone turn your scanner to the NASCAR frequency. Do we need a competition yellow? Four to go for Gary Catellis. Three laps to go for Gary Catellis. The drivers are racing in the order in which they started. So we have a dilemma, folks. How do we pick the hard charger? Two to go.
Coming around to the white flag is Gary Catalis. Only one person has to pass someone and they will be awarded with the hard charger. Checkered flag for Gary Catalis in his Skeets 58 Bumblebee. Congratulations, Gary. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, I wish there were some more people that ran our class. I guess uh, Tri-City took a number on them uh, amateur stock cars. So we just wanted to bring it out and get it set up for uh, a couple other tracks this year and make sure everything runs good. So At the beginning of the heats today, you only had six cars, but two went out in the heat. So with the final four, well, you had a four-person duel for the 12 laps. Yeah, I was kind of mad. My cousin Joey come all the way out here to run, and I was hoping to uh, finish one, two, but his motor didn't allow that. So, you know, car run good. I'd like to thank Butch, thank my dad, uh, Craig, working on the car, and uh, it was just fun driving. Congratulations.